Well, good evening. I just wanted to tell you a little exciting information that I saw today. And I don't know if you're a big fan of Josh Gates and Expedition Unknown, but I love that show. I love all of the uh, discoveries and adventures that go on in that show. And it's coming back on with another season. And in this upcoming season, this is really exciting because I did a video about this archaeological discovery of the true Bethsaida, the home of Simon Peter, Andrew, and Philip. And um, so they are going to be going there and having a show about this discovery of what they believe is the real Bethsaida. And if you want, you can look up my video on that by typing that in the title with my name and my Elijah and Moses if you want to see that video. But it says in its upcoming season, Expedition Unknown, a series on Discovery Channel, will explore Israel and ancient Bethsaida. Among the discoveries at Bethsaida is an inscription dedicated to Simon Peter the Apostle. So this is really exciting to me. And J. Post, the Jerusalem Post, said this about it, published May 15th of 2023, Expedition Unknown to Cover Israeli Site of Jesus Christ Miracles. And it says, Bethsaida is said the home of three of Jesus Christ's twelve apostles, including St. Peter. Season 11 of Expedition Unknown takes a look. Discovery Channel's Expedition Unknown series will cover the land of Israel in its upcoming season, revealing an ancient site believed to be Bethsaida, the birthplace of three of Jesus Christ's twelve apostles, and where Jesus Christ himself performed miracles. But included among the findings from Bethsaida is an inscription that was addressed to St. Peter, also known as Simon Peter the Apostle. This discovery was made in an archaeological excavation at Bet Havek El Araj, which is what I discussed in my video, identified as the old Jewish village of Bethsaida, the birthplace of the three apostles of Jesus Christ. Bethsaida is mentioned elsewhere in the New Testament as a place where Jesus performed miracles. The Gospel of Mark describes it as where Jesus restored sight to a blind man. The Gospel of Luke mentions it as the place where Jesus fed 5,000 plus people. But what isn't known about this place is where it is, but they think they've actually found it now. Sources have always differed about its exact location, including ancient sources such as Josephus and Pliny the Elder. All, however, say it was somewhere in Israel's north. Three locations have traditionally been linked to Bethsaida. Mesadia, El Araj, and Et Tel. Et Tel was way further inland and it was excavated quite some time ago, but they never found anything that really could say for certain that that was Bethsaida. And the Bethsaida that they just found at El Araj, that one was along the shoreline, the, the modern day shoreline. At the other location at Tell, they had said that the water had, um, you know, the shoreline had long since gone further away from the village. But the one that they just found is really right there on the edge of the shoreline. And if you go to Magdala, uh, Migdal, that is 
where they found Mary Magdalene's uh, synagogue, and that one is also right along the shoreline. So it makes sense that this one would not have been covered up and that the shoreline, you know, greatly receded. So El Araj looks like it is the actual place. However, experts now say that they have found proof that El Araj is, in fact, Bethsaida. Isn't that exciting? So this discovery will be shown in the 11th season of Expedition Unknown with Josh Gates, which is set to premiere on May 24th. But the research will follow up on work done by archaeologists from Kinneret College in Israel and Nyack College, New York. This team, led by Professor Mordecai Aviam and Professor Stephen Notley, found a large Greek inscription during excavations in a structure called the Church of the Apostles at the El Araj Bet Habek dig. The structure dates back to the Byzantine period. The inscription, which was translated by Professor Leah de Segni of the Hebrew University of Jerusalem and Professor Yaakov Ashkenazi of Kinneret College, references a donor, Constantine, the servant of Christ, a petition for St. Peter to pray on behalf of the person. The inscription refers to Peter as chief and commander of the heavenly apostles. The title chief and commander of the heavenly apostles is routinely used by Byzantine Christian writers to refer to the apostle Peter according to archaeologists. So this is going to be a really exciting adventure. Um, I can't wait to see Josh Gates go do this expedition unknown there in the real Bethsaida. How exciting. And the last, uh, when I did my video, they still had much of it yet to be unearthed. And so it'll be really thrilling to see if they've discovered anything else that's new and exciting. So I just wanted to let you know that this is coming and this show is going to air on uh, the Discovery Channel, Expedition Unknown with Josh Gates. And the, I don't know if the exact episode is May 24th or if that's just when the season begins. So make sure you look for it and watch it. It's going to be an exciting episode and I hope he does more excavation work there as an archaeologist with other archaeologists um, in other areas of Israel. But this should be really a thrilling adventure and I can't wait to see it. And I just wanted to let you know about it because I was really excited when I saw that not only is his show coming back on to do another season, but he's actually going to the real place where Simon Peter and Andrew, his brother, and Philip lived and were raised. So this is really exciting. And will they unearth anything else of significance? I hope so. And um, I hope you'll go back and view the video. If I can find the link to my previous video, I'll put the link in the uh, below the video. So you can see what I said about that. It was a while ago, and um, I was really excited that that they really had proof.
and just one of the shows will be Josh as he travels to Israel to investigate the claims of two separate groups of researchers who say they have located the biblical city of Bethsaida where Jesus is said to have performed miracles. And um, he actually did perform miracles. I hate it when they say, you know, like it's some sort of hearsay. <laughs> it's the truth. Some of the episodes in the past I have not liked to watch because they had to do with pagan idols or whatever and finding these ancient pagan things. So I don't watch all the episodes, but I'm excited when he does go to Israel and he does film things there. And this should be a pretty exciting show. I hope they spend a lot of time going to the El Arage site because that's where I believe it is. So with that, I'll just say I hope this gets you excited about something really neat that's really biblical. And I truly believe that this is being unearthed at a very specific time in history and covered up and protected all this time. You know, some of the flood waters kind of covered over the area and made it sort of hard to do the archaeological dig. So it's really exciting when they had a little bit of a drought area they were able to excavate some of the area from what I remember from my video and um, I just am looking forward to it I thought I'd share that and everything and also I just wanted to mention that I had been really busy the past week I had not been able to do very many videos I got my car back out of the shop yes it had some visible little hail dents in the hood which I was not happy about and you can't really see them unless you're looking down the hood and you could see a couple little pockets there so we had I just wanted to say we had the second hailstorm in probably less than a week and a half we were in a severe on the weather map in a severe red area and the strange thing is I went up north of town and I was going into this um, store momentarily and I came out and I was trying to put my wallet away and before I could get about 30 or 40 feet to my car I mean, it did not even sprinkle. It just started dumping buckets of rain with hail going sideways. And I was like, no, no, I didn't want it to hail. I had no protection for me or my car. So I ran out there and I got in my car. And it was coming down like cats and dogs coming out of the sky. <laughs> it was like somebody up there opened the floodgates. And man, the water was coming down like you cannot believe. It was hailing. The hail was hitting my car. The visibility was very low. And I was trying to get to the other end of town. And I was hoping to drive out from the hailstorm, which I did manage to do. But then when I got to the other end of town, it must have hooked up with the other part of the storm that I had escaped from and it started hailing severely again and the strangest thing of all was that when I got my car back from the shop and I was trying to clean my windshield um, I thought that the windshield wiper fluid thing was broken when well, you push that forward and it seemed to be broken and I knew that I was out of windshield washer fluid. So the day before this massive flooding rain came, I happened to think, okay, well, I saw my windshield wiper was broken and there was no putting it back on. It was flipping and flopping like it was going to fly off. And I thought, you know, I absolutely have to have that fixed. So I went and got some windshield wiper blades and the guy put them on for me and I was thinking you know I need to get some 99 cent windshield washer fluid so I go to the gas station and it's now six dollars for the windshield washer fluid and I thought that's absurd you know 
So anyway, I wound up going to Grease Monkey, and they told me that they would fill and top it off for free. So praise God, because I really needed that blessing. So the very next day, we got this deluge, and all of this hail came down. And seriously, I when I got back to the side of the town where the hotel is, there's like a, a roof covering where you drive up. And I pulled my car right under there, and man, the hail was just coming down. Flood waters were coming down. And then they announced a flash flood watch for the area. It was already flooding streams, and I could see it was flooding around in the street. And even when I was coming back, I was um, literally uh, kind of swerving because there was so much rain collected in the road, and it was spraying up. And I just was praying, Jesus, please get me back safe. I ran under that roof and sat there for half an hour to 45 minutes while it just kept coming down, down, down the hail. Fortunately, this hail was more a uh, pea-sized hail, uh, not like the hail we had when my car was in the shop, which dropped like 2.6-inch hail balls that were flat. It was the strangest thing I'd ever seen, but they weren't all the same size, but I found those very large ones. And like I said, when I got my car back, I could see some little indentations in the hood. So that was one of the things I was facing this week in trying to get the windshield wipers repaired. And if I had not done that, I could have been in a perilous situation because that wiper was leaving streaks really badly because it wasn't it wasn't flush with the window so fortunately God put it on my heart get those wipers and put them on and the next day was a flash flood so it was amazing I no longer got out of the dollar store, heading to my car, trying to put my wallet away, and I got drenched and hail started falling up north. And now it's down here by the hotel, and I'm underneath the awning. got back celebrating mom for Mother's Day and this rainbow came in the sky. 
It's not Mother's Day. It's Tuesday. I just got my car back and went to Loveland. So, have a nice evening. I'll talk to you later. And I hope this makes you excited to be able to see this on Expedition Unknown in the upcoming season, beginning May 24th. I'm not sure when that uh, episode will air from that starting date, but just pay attention to the programs and you'll see it. Okay, well, good night. Like, subscribe, and share. Please support my channel, paypal.me slash kk R-O-C-O-C-O -O -O, and the donation address is Kimberly K. Ballard B-A-L-L-A-R-D P.O. Box 246 Niwot N-I-W-O-T Colorado 80544 Thank you so much. Thanks to everyone um, who's blessed me in the past and helped me, I greatly need it and appreciate it. And I thank you so much for supporting my work. All right, shalom for now. Good night.